Hey everyone, welcome into Maisie Days. I'm Amanda Maisie. This is brought to you by Vision Homes, building you a home you're proud to call home. Nope, that's not it. Sorry, it's a house. All right, try that again. Three, two, and one. So use both of these because okay. this is great advertising. Three, two, one. Hey everyone, welcome into Maisie Days. I'm Amanda Maisie. This is brought to you by Vision Homes, building you a house you're proud to call home. Nice. This is podcast number, I don't know, this is the early morning edition. It is, and we are about three weeks late. It's been a while since we've done anything. It's been kind of crazy. Welcome to our life. What a scary thought when you're growing up and have a girlfriend and your girlfriend is three weeks late. Doesn't that scare the crap out of you? It would scare the crap out of me. But we've been married for 100 years, so being three weeks late, it's not a big deal at our age. Yeah, actually, actually it would be. <laughs> but we don't have to worry about that. That's been taken care of. But since it's the early morning edition, <laughs> I'm going to start out with the greatest sound in the world. It's not my voice? No, that's my Red Bull. I know. Pouring it into my cup of ice just to set the stage. I have coffee, the rabbit poop. Set the mood. You want to switch? Yeah, let's do it. No, thanks. I'm yeah. joking. A lot has happened in three weeks. I believe the last time we did a podcast was before the final home series against Kansas State. WBU put on a really nice ceremony to honor you. That that was very special. You got to have all the fans on the field afterwards. Let's just start with that and what that meant to you. you know, everybody asked me when I made the decision to retire a year ago, all throughout the season, everybody's like, when's it going to hit you? When's it going to hit you? I'm like, I don't know. Was, if I knew when it was going to hit me, I could prepare for it. So I never knew when it was going to hit me. The morning of the last game, I was fine. Got up in the morning, did my thing, drank my Red Bull, went to the field for pregame. And they had these dang t-shirts all set out for the players and coaches with a big number 14 on there. Coach Maisie's last season. And I went up to the office and looked over the field and realized... Hey, this is the last time I'll ever get to coach on this field in a game. That's when it hit me, so I cried like a big baby, like I'm just about to do right now. But (laughs) I was sitting there crying, and I heard somebody sneak into my office. They didn't know I was in there to grab something, and I heard them tiptoe back out. They must have saw me crying like a big baby. I later found out it was Jimmy Racinger. (laughs) He walked in there and saw me acting like a fool. I don't even think he turned around. I think he walked backwards out of the office. (laughs) I have to give all the credit to Matt Wells. He came to me probably about a month or so before the last home series and said they wanted to do all this stuff for you. They framed your jersey, framed your BP top, a bat. They wanted to do all these videos. And he just kept telling me all these things they wanted to do for you. And I was completely humbled and honored that they thought enough of you to do that. It was just really special. And, you know, your mom came up and they involved the the kids and I. And just to have it a family affair was really special because I feel like that's what we've always been. It's just a big family that's been an extension of this program. Yeah, but I told those guys going into that weekend... You know, when I do my coach's show with Angelica, she always gives me the F store got o keys to the game this weekend. And going into that last home series, she's like, what are your keys to the game? I was like, to not make this weekend about me. If you make it about me, you're, we're not going to play very well. We need to play baseball. But they went ahead and made it about me anyhow, and we played well. But the coolest part of the whole deal, it was an honor to wave to the crowd for the last time and do all that. But we're lined up for the national anthem in my last home game ever. And I'm like, where the heck is the singer? Where the heck is Wham? He always stands right beside me for the national anthem. And the guy in the PA says, now playing the national anthem is Weston Maisie on the saxophone. I'm like, on the saxophone? I lived through all those days when he first got it to think that he could go out there and play the national anthem. I'd have lost a little bit of money uh, on the odds of him killing it, but he went out there and killed it. I think I was crying like a baby then too, so I couldn't hear all that well, but it was amazing how he performed in front of 3,000 people, and that joker went and practiced without me knowing about it, and got really good at the National Anthem, so I thought he killed it. That was awesome. The backstory behind that, Weston played the saxophone in middle school. He's a junior right now. He hasn't played the saxophone since. He wanted to learn the National Anthem, so he downloaded the music, taught himself how to do it. And then 
when we were at Cincinnati, he went to the stadium to play in the stadium. That was his first time. And he bombed. The marketing girl, Jasmine, texted me and she was like, well, he was definitely nervous. And Weston said, mom, I can't do this. I said, wham, try it one more time. I'm not going to put you out there to fail, but I've heard a lot of bad anthems. It doesn't matter. People are going to love it because it's you. Just give it one more time. If you're not comfortable, we won't do this. He goes back out on Sunday when we're at Cincinnati and he killed it. Jasmine said, he's got it. So that was that. So that was cool. So then after that weekend, we go down to TCU. That was an amazing weekend. It, we still have a ton of friends down there. We're, every time we drive down that one road, we always say, oh, that's where our kids were born. So I had to put everybody on the bus through that. That's where my kids were born, like they care. We went and played really well. Hard place to win. Important series. We had to, I thought we had to do well down there to make it to a regional. And, and we did and got to see some friends and some former teammates went out of their way for me. We went out to dinner Saturday night. You got in the rental car and said, hey, let's go to a new restaurant in town. Got in the car and you kept driving and driving. I'm like, the hell kind of restaurant is out here? And we went to one of my former players' house in which there was about 15 of my former players that had secretly, with you, put together a surprise party for me. And it was really cool to see those guys. It's amazing the memories that come flooding back to you when you see their old asses 15 years later with their wives and kids. I can remember a story about just about every one of them that we talked about and laughed about. That was pretty cool. And that was cool. We actually stood in the kitchen and everybody had a story to tell. And then you told a story about every single one of those players. That was a great moment. The gifts you get your last year of retirement is amazing. I walked out of TCU with two fly rods, a rifle case, an ammunition case. I'm like, this retirement thing's pretty cool, actually. Maybe I'll change my mind, coach next year, announce my retirement again, <laughs> and collect a lot more gifts. I don't think that's going to go over too well. Actually, as we're sitting in the office, all of the gifts that you've been given, um, you got the rock chalk, whiskey, you got all kinds of things. Like it's, it's nice to be thought of and loved at the end of the day. It's not about the stuff. We know that. When coaching is over, you still have friends. I've always taken pride in my relationships with other coaches. And if I would have gone on re- my retirement tour and not gotten shit from anybody, that's a pretty bad sign, I think. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Do we want to talk about the Big 12 Conference Tournament, or we, can we just no. flip the page on that? No, well, that sucked. That doesn't exist. Okay, good. Last night, we had the team over for a dinner to celebrate them getting into a regional. You guys are leaving today. We also had the crew over from Mondays and our friends. We just had this big party to celebrate. I love it so much when we do that. That's probably going to be one of the things I miss the most. When the guys got here, I set up all of the games out front. They're playing cornhole and, and a chipping game and spike ball. And I just looked out and just saw these you know 19-year-old kids acting like little kids playing. And I thought, man, that's, that's what I'm going to miss a lot. You don't have to miss it. I'm going to invite all teams up here three times a week to do the same thing. doesn't matter if we know them or not. Okay. I would love that. Yeah, Seriously. It's cool. All the coaches at WVU, if you want to bring your team to my house to play spike ball, come on. <laughs> Let's do it. But the, having the fans here, they love that. The team comes first, they eat, and then we have our friends and the fans over for Mondays, and they get to interact. It's really special. I don't know many other coaches that do that with the fans. That's pretty cool, Maze. Yeah, that's why I love the fans. They're the ones that got us where we are, so I just want to find some sort of way to show my appreciation. And maybe that's why we do this podcast, to reach out to the people that love our program and hear the ins and outs of it. That's pretty cool. The best thing about Mondays and letting them interact with the kids, when you go to a baseball game, isn't it way more fun to watch a game if you know something about the kids on the field? So now all the fans at Mondays know just about a little bit about everybody on the team. Makes watching the game so much more fun. Leaving today for a regional, going out to Tucson, Arizona. Thank you, NCAA, for that one. Selection show on Monday. I always find out the night before the selection show if we're in and where we're going. The worst thing you can do is throw a team party together and watch the selection show and and don't make it. That's a huge kick in the balls. I did actually find out the night before that we were in which we probably do anyhow. But I told all the people that usually tell me, don't tell me where we're going. I want to find out. Kind of like when our kids were born. We didn't want to know the sex until they came squirting out. Uh, We love that surprise. So I wanted to be surprised right along with the guys. 
So, of course, before the show started, when you showed up, all dressed to the nines, like you've never done before for a selection show, I'm like... That's BS. Why are you so dressed to the nines? This is your last selection show ever. I didn't cry. I did. (laughs) Thanks. So that was my last selection show. It was a good one. So I didn't know where we were going until they made the announcement that we were going to Arizona. I was actually, from a winning the game standpoint, pretty fired up about that. From a can the fans get there and support us standpoint, that sucked. Yeah, I actually did cry. After the excitement, I did cry for a moment because Weston is playing in the state championship down in Charleston, West Virginia, Morgantown High Baseball, playing for a state title Thursday night. And I thought, okay, we have five regionals within driving distance. Somehow I'll be able to make this work. Nope, we're going to fly our asses out to Arizona. So I'm going to go to his game Thursday night. And when he wins, he's staying. I'm coming out to Arizona Friday morning. If he happens to lose, which he's not, but if they lose, he'll fly out with me Friday morning. Sierra's with you. So as chaotic as it is, I hope the chaos continues in the next week and in the coming weeks. What are you going to do? You had a tough time trying to decide between two family members. That's what it came down to. So my question to you is, what are you going to do when Weston's playing at West Virginia? They're going to the College World Series, and I'm in the National Pickleball Semifinals. Oof. Oh, that's tough. It is tough. That is a tough one. Because you've never played pickleball, so I'm going to have to actually see this like with my own eyes. I can can practice. It's pickleball. Are you kidding me? I'll probably choose Weston because I've been choosing you Because you you love Weston more? Well, I mean... (laughs) We want to go down that road? What? There's never been back-to-back pickleball national champs. So if I make it to the national Okay, who's champ, even the national champ for pickleball? All of a sudden, you're an expert? I can't tell you that. Yeah. I, I've been doing my research. <laughs> yeah, you have. <laughs> I can't even tell you what the size of the ball was. Is it like a basketball? Oh, well, it's not that big. It's, I think, the size of a baseball, but smaller, softer. I so, really don't know. So here's... The first thing I did when I found out we were going to Arizona, the weather's going to be an issue. So I got on my weather app. I actually got on my weather app. Did you hear that? Yes. I got on an app. I did some weather research. You know what the weather's like in Mexico right now? Probably cooler than Arizona. Chilly today, hot tamale. Oh, you've been waiting for that one. I'm... I wanted to start the podcast off with a good joke. I've oh, heard that one. Many times before, too. I can't, How about, under, I can't understand why you won't laugh at that. You need to... Listen, next podcast, come up with a new joke. Something you've never said before. You get it chilly today, hot, hot tamale. tamale. Yes, I get it. I get it. I get the jokes. I get it. No, but really, 105 is the temp at first pitch. I will have more jokes in the future. If you're going to write in with a question, just put a check mark at the end if you liked that weather joke. So here's what I did in an effort to motivate the team. Because you're always trying to find ways to motivate the team. I actually had a little bit of an epiphany in the garden the other day when I was doing my gardening. I was looking at my tomatoes and they were green. This was before the regional party. And I thought, I don't want to stop coaching right now. You know, you make the decision ultimately when you decide to retire. The decision you're making is that you want to stop coaching. But you never know how you're going to feel a year down the road. So here we are a year after I made the decision and I don't want to stop coaching this team. I want this has been a fun season. I want it to keep going. And as I was thinking about that, I was looking at my tomato plants and there's a green tomato on there. And I thought to myself, that'd be cool if this tomato turned red while I was still a coach. I went and told the team that story. So we're playing for red tomatoes. I like that. You yeah. can take it in the suitcase? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> that would be we watch to catch a smuggler. Good point. <laughs> you would get in trouble. To travel with vegetables. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> Sorry. Good point. Good point. Quick question. Jim Farrell, our guy, asks a question every week. We love you, Jim. Did Randy have any superstitions when he played? And if so, what were they? Uh, one superstition I had was when I pulled into the parking lot at Clemson, I would always play Lee Greenwood. God bless the USA. I didn't even know that. Yeah. It was an eight-track tape, but I would play it and listen to it. And when I got in the batter's box, I would always take two practice swings. Just in case the pitcher happened to throw a ball while I was taking a practice swing, I had a chance to hit it. I like it. So, yeah, I had a couple. All right, you got to go. Sierra's coming down the steps. One question? 
One question. Well, okay, I do. We Where's do have, Cindy Colasante? Where's she? Well, doing? I didn't put, I asked, hey, you have questions weeks ago. And right. um, so Todd Gookin, he wanted to know, I saw Randy call for a bunt when the shift was on against Pitt, I think it was. Why don't we see more bunt attempts in those situations? Todd did not see me call for a bunt because the only way I do it is through the Timex. I was giving the fake bunt signal for the fans so they don't know what's up. Good question, because actually guys that can hit homers really aren't all that proficient at bunting. A lot of times when we're facing another team's best hitter, uh, we'll say, yeah, if he wants to bunt, let him bunt. If he wants to try and bunt a 95-mile-an-hour fastball and get it away from the pitcher and get it free, bunting isn't as easy as it looks against a really good pitcher. If the other team's best hitter wants to bunt, we'll play a shift and give him a chance, especially if we have... A guy like Derek Clark on the mound. We shift a lot with Derek Clark because he's really good at fielding bunts. If their best hitter makes an out bunting, he's so mad he can't see straight. Good hitters don't mind bunting, but they despise getting out by trying to bunt. So they rarely do it. Good question, Todd. Good question. I got a question for Todd Gukin. When I was playing adult league hockey and I was in the net, I was the goalie, why did he score on me? That still sits in my crow. That's... A question for you. I wanted, You're supposed to I stop wanted it. sympathy from those guys, and they just kept firing pucks right at my face. Oh, yes, Sierra. We've got Sierra Maisie making an appearance. Come on in, babe. Oh, she just <laughs> ripped the doorknob off the office. Well, you're little, stuck here. A little aggressive this morning, Sierra. <laughs> I forgot the door pushes. <laughs> Good morning, Sierra. You're literally on the podcast right now. Okay, I was just wondering, is the green bag like good to go? Yeah, just I'll, I'll zip it up. So, okay, taking it. Sierra, are you excited to go to Arizona? Yeah. What do you want me to do about the handle? <laughs> I'll, I'll fix the doorknob. It's gonna be a. This is our doorknob. It's gonna be 103 degrees. So. And there's oh, no pool at the hotel. There's a cool front because it was 105. Sierra, do you know what the weather is like in Mexico right now? Chilly today, hot tamale. See. See? See? Everybody knows the joke. See? <laughs> Proves my point. We've thank, heard it. Thank you, Sierra. Mm-hmm. Thanks, babe. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you do need to go. You need to go win this regional. So get your ass. Peace out. I hope the next time I talk to you, I'm still a baseball coach. Mm-hmm. That'd, be, that'd be cool. That'd be amazing. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening to Maisie Days, brought to you by Vision Homes. Let's yeah. go win a regional, babe. Go buy a house. Go See win ya. a game. Many. <laughs> <laughs>